Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing fantastically well. It is Connor here, and we are back here with the room mill. A little bit of a quick morning early update. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. You've got your, your coffee, your tea, your wine, wherever, whenever you are in this beautiful place that we call planet Earth. Now, listen... What a wonderful day it was for Leeds United yesterday, picking up the awards of course, afterwards we saw awards go to Elan Melier for Young Player of the Year, we saw Stuart Dallas picking up numerous awards, fantastic to see, listen, a bustling team this year, a hustling team this year, a fantastic team this year, Leeds United have overperformed, Leeds United have overachieved, are we as fans surprised? I don't know. I picked 11th at the start of the year. Normally, I'm a pessimistic guy when it comes to football and Leeds United. And I picked 11th. So, am I surprised? No, because I know what this team can achieve. And I'm so proud of each and every single one of them for dying for this year. This year. And they have. I don't think I've ever been prouder of a side ever. Even in our championship winning side, I'll be honest with you guys. I think this eclipses it because of what we've done, what, what we've done, what we've had to over uh, overcome. With the adversity we've had as well this year, it's been truly phenomenal. So well done to the boys for the rewards uh, and and just their general performance this season. It's been truly phenomenal. West Brom, fantastic again. That word, that word, the F word, fantastic. It was a, a, a good occasion. I was down there doing some media uh, work. It was very nice, very nice seeing a lot of you down there. A lot of you recognised me from the channel, which is always lovely. Lovely day as well for the second half of it. Anyway, I was there from 11am and it was uh, it was a bit rainy at the start. But listen, when you come to the performance, the team lineup was announced. Kassir and Net again. <laughs> we saw a few edgy moments, didn't we? For, sorry, a few edgy moments uh, in that game. Berra at the back. Pablo starting, which was great to see. And uh, yeah, wholesale changes. A lot of changes in this starting lineup. And you could sort of see it really. There was there wasn't that much cohesion, that much chemistry. It was a completely different back line. We saw Cooper, Alien, and Berardi sort of in a back three. And I thought Leeds were decent. We created chances. Defensively, I didn't think we were that great. It wasn't one of our best performances, but it's the end of season. It's never gonna be, is it? I, I did think it was one of our weaker performances, which says a lot when you win in the Premier League game three one. Pablo, I thought was the best player on the pitch. Genuinely, and, and how crazy is it? How mad is it that he had a year left on his contract and, you know, he's going? And yeah, how bizarre is it? He was the best player on the pitch. It's such a weird feeling. He went off, he was crying, bless him. Berardi was crying. But when it panned to Pablo and he's bawling his eyes out in the, sta in the, in the stadium, you, know, you, you don't get players like that anymore. You know, these players have been with us through the thick and thin. You know, Berardi, seven years, the amount of crap dross that he's seen even Pablo player of the year three times three times I mean don't get me wrong I know some of those times haven't been the the greatest of times but you know we've had some decent teams in in in, in those periods you know the the first Bielsa side Gary Monk side the Christiansen part you know it was it's not been too bad when Pablo's been around but Berardi I mean he's seen some some things hasn't he he really has and I'm just so happy that I've been part of it and it was great to see both of them yesterday. But listen, ninth, as I said earlier, most points for a promoted side since 2000. Since 2000. 21 years. It's all right though. To some, we're still underachieving. Most goals ever by a promoted side. Most away wins ever from a promoted side. 10. Fourth joint clean sheets. And wouldn't it have been great yesterday if we'd have got it? If it wasn't for that, Cooper Phillips mishap and and, and letting let, literally giving West Brom a goal, you know that'd have been that'd be thirteen clean sheets, and I think we'd have gone to third. To say we had the defensive problems, which people still allude to, by the way, for whatever reason, because we've evidently sorted that, those uh, defensive uh, problems out. You know what, eight goals conceded in twelve games, a ridiculous amount of clean sheets, one goal from a set piece now in in ten games. So we've clearly sorted all that out, but people have certain agendas that they have to fit. And um, certainly when you look at the overriding perspective and the overriding general view on things, Leeds' defensive record since the turn of the new year has been truly phenomenal. You know, uh, the form table in 24 games now, we would be second in the division. Uh, sorry, we would be uh, uh, fourth in the division. Um, the last 10, we would be second, which is, is truly staggering. Paul Merson. 
was coming at us at the start of the season, wasn't he? But he's turned around and, and he's put Rafinha in his team of the season. Uh, he said he's absolutely outstanding. And, you know, it's lovely to see Rafa up there with the likes of Harry Kane and Mares up top in a front three. And um, Merson actually called, he actually called uh, Neville out and said, how can you put Rashford in there? ahead of Rafinha and you've got to look at that and think so what's Rafinha had 17 goal contributions and he's and he's played what since really since January um yeah I mean he's been phenomenal absolutely phenomenal Chris Boyd um Chris Boyd remember he, was, he had that little bit of an argument with Jeff Stelling on air well Jeff Stelling's gone at him again from a Leeds perspective we love you Jeff uh, he, uh Chris Boyd who still is banging on the notion that Leeds are underachieving you know, Ralph Hasenhutl came out the other day for a Southampton side that have been established in the Premier League, League for several years and said, we want to be like Leeds. We'd love to compete with teams like Leeds. We've been in the, in the Premier League one season, right? One season, we're getting compliments from an established Premier League team like Southampton about wanting to be like Leeds. Chris Boyd's coming out and sort of devaluing that. He's saying we're underachieving, even though, as I've just read out the four statistics, most points for a promoted side in 21 years, most away wins, most goals, fourth joint clean sheet. <laughs> Second in the form table, four wins out of four. Uh, we're underachieving. Uh, when you look at the value of the squad, and you actually he keeps comparing us to Wolves for whatever reason, but you look at the value of the squad when we came up, and you look at the value of Wolves' squad when they came up, that was their, their squad far surpassed us, you know, far surpassed us. So, you know, if you will, we're looking at little things like that. But yeah, and, and I just I just think it's a bit bizarre for Chris Boyd to continue with this. He's, he's evidently proven wrong and he just wants to continue backing it. We've got more points than Wolves got in their first season. Yeah, they finished seventh, but we'd have finished seventh because we've got more points than they achieved. It's just the standard of season. But anyway... The, the Daily Mirror has reported that Marcelo Bielsa <clears throat> is signing a new contract this week. Leeds United are expected to hear uh, so, so from the boss this week and Leeds are supposed to be penning paper. Is it penning paper? No, it's not. Pen, in, pen on paper. Yeah, pen on paper for Bielsa's new contract. And <clears throat> this has been doing the rumour mill for the past week now. We sort of started hearing this when Bielsa was signing his contract pre-Liverpool, if you quite remember. There was a lot of a lot of articles being posted about Bielsa's about to sign the new contract. He's doing it this week. The Daily Mirror are the first ones to break that Bielsa will be signing a new Leeds United contract this week. And <clears throat> moving on, guys, I mean, that is it's brilliant news. We don't even need to talk about it, do we? we? I think as Leeds fans, we're already planning ahead with Bielsa anyway. The transfer plans are already in place. I always look at it like that. If the transfer plans weren't in place and the recruitment strategy wasn't on point already and we weren't looking at certain players, then... I would expect Bielsa to leave, but it's evident we're, we're putting um, irons in the fire over certain players, so obviously Bielsa's going to stay because they're Bielsa's targets. So, Alioski is leaving, really. Dallas confirms, you know, if you watched the video last night of of Stuart Dallas talking about Leeds and, and how amazing it is to be part of this group, he kind of signalled that Alioski's going. He was like, I hope he's going to stay, but... We, we know something about his future, yada, yada, yada. If you go back and watch the video, he essentially comes out and says Alioski's leaving. And yeah, I don't know, it was a bit of a weird weird way to find out um, that he is leaving. If you haven't seen it already, type it in on Twitter or Instagram. It's just Dallas talking about the squad. Yeah, a bit weird. But Alioski leaving the club, essentially. How do you feel about it? Are you upset about it? Are you okay about it? Did you expect it? I'm sort of in the middle, really. I'd like him as a backup, but I don't think he'd stay as a backup. You know, I think he'd be a great backup, but I don't think he would stay as a backup. And I think that's the the, the big differential. Rodrigo's come out uh, yesterday and he said that he expects it to be a tougher season for Leeds United next year. Now, this is a really interesting point because a lot of Leeds fans talking about Europe. Obviously, we've got a, a new man on the board, the Australian, who's come on the board. who's worth 4.1 billion midweek. Uh, the 49ers have said that they're not. We're not going to be like any other American owners. We we invest in the community. We invest in Leeds United. We want to be part of this and we want to bring Leeds up as a brand. You look at what we've done with the 49ers in 10 years. Look at where they were and where they are now. And if you do what American football, you know where the 49ers are. It's it's, it's quite staggering from when um, from when Parag and his team came in. So yeah, and and the reason I'm mentioning all this is because I think it's all going to be hinged on investment. It's all going to be hinged on obviously getting Bielsa tied down, and essentially it's going to be hinged on Leeds United as a side really progressing and being able to 
with fans in there sustain this level of performance and sustain this charge and this growth as a club that we all think we should get to and we all think uh, we will be at in in however many months, years, whatever it can be. So let me know in the comment section below, are you expecting a tougher season? I'll be honest with you guys, I am. And that's just because of what Rodrigo said. I think teams are going to be a little bit more used and well-versed to what Leeds are about. I think the fans could make an impact, but also the fans are going to make a much posit uh, much more positive impact at Ellen Road. You look at Wolves, West Ham, Chelsea, Arsenal, um, Liverpool, all those games at home where Leeds did have periods in the game where the crowd would have spurred us on, in my opinion, to get that goal, that, that vital goal or that vital equaliser, whatever it may be. But he does expect a tough season. Really interesting from Rodrigo. Douglas Costa as well. We were linked with him for many weeks. He is now signed for Gremio in Brazil. Leeds apparently were very interested. Bielsa is a big admirer, but that is that with him. And Jackie Harrison, it is a lot of people saying it's not 15 million. It's been widely reported that it is 15 million that we'll get him for. We'll have to see this week. But talks are progressing with Jack Harrison. There's a lot of City fans who actually want him back. A lot of Leeds fans think we've already signed him. We have not already signed him. We are in talks with him. Um, Jack Harrison does want to come to Leeds, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. Guys, if you've enjoyed this, thank you so much. It's been a bit more of a quick one this morning. It's not nice and, uh, and done, in, done in my room with my microphone. But sometimes I have to get you the news straight away when I'm on the move. Thank you so much for joining, guys. If you wouldn't mind liking the video, it means a massive deal to me. It just gives me an indication that you're enjoying what I'm doing. Make sure you subscribe as well. There's 45.5% of you who aren't. And guys, have a lovely day. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.